Okay, the final item of business is a member's business debate on motion uh, 2795 in the name of Jeremy Balfour on welcoming the Down Syndrome Bill. The debate will be concluded without any questions being put. I would encourage those who wish to participate to press the request to speak buttons now or as soon as possible. And I call on Jeremy Balfour to open the debate for around seven minutes. Mr Balfour. Uh, thank you, Deputy President Officer. Can I declare an interest in saying that I have a, a niece and two cousins uh, who, are down, who both all have Down Syndrome. I would like to begin by thanking those who have supported this motion and members' debate from across this chamber. It has been great to see support from almost all parties, although I am disappointed that the Greens decided not to support it. I find it sad that they could not bring themselves to put politics aside for the sake of the Down syndrome community. I would also like to thank Dr Liam Fox. His bill has long been anticipated and sends a clear message to a community in this country that for a long time has felt left behind, undervalued and ignored. Now, I am no way saying that the story ends with the passing of this bill, because it is clear that there is still a long way to go, but it is certainly a large step, right step, in the right direction. Deputy President Officer, I have to admit that this is not the speech that I had planned to give, nor the speech that I particularly wanted to give. My original speech was going to extol the virtue of this bill. I was going to describe how placing a concrete responsibility on local authorities to accommodate those with Down syndrome will create a much less hostile environment than what we have unfortunately been used to. And Deputy President Officer, I was going to petition the Scottish Government to adopt this bill and allow it to be a UK-wide piece of legislation. The bill was drafted, extended to England and Wales, although there was a possibility for the people of Scotland to benefit. The Downs community in Scotland could have had the same protection as England and Wales. I was hopeful, given the fact that the SNP MP had publicly supported the bill. Mr Chapman, in the second stage debate, said this. I hope that, should it be passed, our colleagues in Wales, Northern Ireland and Scotland will look at it sympathetically and introduce equivalent measures across the UK. I wish the bill Godspeed. But it is now too late. The bill has passed through both the Commons and the Lords and is awaiting royal assent. To, to the delight of those with Down syndrome in England and Wales, new protections and rights are only a signature away from being a reality. Those in Scotland, however, are left with a hollow feeling of wondering what possible reason there could be for the SNP to refuse to support them in this way. And the answer, Deputy President Officer, is there is no good reason. This has been a political decision taken by the Scottish Government that is so caught up in a constitutional battle and grievance politics that we can't even support Down syndrome community. The fear of saying that Westminster is bad will overrule even things affecting those with disabilities. President Officer, the whole of Scotland has suffered over the past 15 years from the SNP dropping the ball while their eyes have been on the constitutional obsession. Drugs death, a &E waiting times, educational standards. But the disab disability community feel uniquely cast aside. Let's have a look back at even just a couple of years. During the pandemic, face masks presented a great problem for those who were hard of hearing because muffling of voices and made it impossible to those who rely on lip reading to interact and participate in society. While the health boards around the UK approved clear face masks, the Scottish Government dragged their heels and it wasn't until December of 2021 that any Scotland provided with the doctors with them, almost two years after the beginning of a pandemic. The SNP refused to prioritise the disability community yet again. Another prime example is with the unfolding ferries fiasco. While it is undeniable that there have been lots of mistakes made, the one thing that could have happened was we could have seen changing places toilets put in the design. These toilets have a gold standard of disabled facilities that provide all needs a disabled person might have. But more than that, we send a message to the disabled community that you're welcome in a place and you can travel freely. A colleague of mine, Jamie Harper Johnson, asked the Scottish Government whether the plans for the two new ferries included a change-in-place toilet 
and in short, the answer was no. They included no such toilet, and the answer seemed to infer that the Transport Minister did not understand that a change-in-place toilet was more than just a disabled toilet with changing facilities. Once again, the SNP refused to make the inclusion of the disabled community a priority. Presiding officer, there are just two examples, but that shows us, I think, the attitude and the reasoning behind tonight's debate. There was no good reason for the Scottish Government to oppose this bill. They will tell us that they are planning something bigger and better and more tartan, but this is simply an excuse. The UK bill does not need to be exhaustive and in no way prohibits the Scottish Government going from further in future legislation. This was a political decision that uses Down syndrome as a pawn for the, of, for the sake of scoring cheap points against a government and that is actually taking the issue seriously. The result is that even if the SNP do not, do not bring forward their own bill, those with Down syndrome in Scotland will be forced to wait an unnecessary length of time. Unlike those in England and Wales that now have these rights, they do not occur in Scotland. Stronger for Scotland, presiding officer? I think not. And certainly not stronger for the disabled community. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, Mr Balfour. Uh, we now move to the open debate. I first call Stephanie Callaghan, who joins us remotely, to be followed by Paula Kane for around four minutes, Ms Callaghan. Thank you, President Officer. Um, and I'd like to thank Jeremy Balfour for bringing these motions to the Chamber. And I must also give a wee shout out to an inspirational family member with Down syndrome. I'll call him Mr T, who can will you with his music knowledge and make you smile every day of the week. Like my colleague in Westminster, Douglas Champman, I want to offer supportive comments on the Down syndrome bill for England and Wales. The bill sets out to destigmatise de Down syndrome, improve services and deal with issues like long term care. It will require the UK government to publish guidance on the specific needs of people with Down syndrome and how these needs should be met. With legal protections in place, it's hoped the bill will make it easier for people with Down syndrome and their families to secure the services they need and to challenge authorities not acting on their duties. However, whilst I support the intentions behind the Down syndrome bill, I believe that the approach laid out by the Scottish Government has clear advantages as we look to secure and sustain the transformative change that is overdue for people with Down syndrome who are living in Scotland. The Scottish Government is committed to introducing a learning disability, autism and neurodiversity bill as part of the programme for government this year. In addition, a very welcome learning disability commissioner role will be created. The bill and the associated commissioner we ensure that the rights of people with Down syndrome, amongst others, are respected and protected. This inclusive rights-based approach underway in Scotland, i.e. a pan-learning disability, autism and neurodiversity approach, is actually attracting a lot of attention from other parts of the UK. And that's because it avoids a situation where one group is singled out and prioritised over another in the delivery of public services. Instead, our approach recognises people's distinctive needs, whilst protecting the rights of all those with learning disabilities. Organisations such as Down Syndrome Scotland have told me they are encouraged by the timetable to develop and introduce the Learning Disability Bill in Scotland, and are equally impressed by the determination of the Scottish Government to ensure people with lived experience are fully and meaningfully engaged in the consultation on the Bill's scope, ambition and policy provisions. Presiding officer, their voices are so important. The Scottish Government programme provides the community, and that is parents and carers and adults with Down syndrome, with the time and the space to meaning, meaningfully express their views in, a, in a ways that are inclusive, accessible, respectful and rights-based. When I spoke on International Day of People with Disabilities, I focused my speech on the importance of the words nothing about us without us. And one of the criticisms of Dr Liam Fox's bill is how few people with lived experience were included in its development. I applaud the Scottish Government for taking an alternative approach, one that champions the voices of the community. Given the Scottish Government's more inclusive approach that embraces the rights of people with all learning disabilities, it will be crucially important to recognise and explicitly identify people with Down syndrome 
within the definition of learning dis disability set out in the Learning Disability Bill in Scotland. As Deciding Officer, these new powers and provisions build and work already underway in Scotland to bring about lasting change for people with Down syndrome and their families and their carers. Eddie McConnell, Chief Executive of Down Syndrome Scotland, believes we are opening a new chapter with the Learning Disability Bill in Scotland, and I wholeheartedly agree with that. I hope the Down Syndrome Bill also heralds a new chapter in UK government approach and thinking, one that is far more centred in lived experience. As I said earlier, nothing about us without us. Presiding officer. Thank you very much indeed, Ms. Callan. I now call on Paul O'Kane to be followed by Stephen Kerr for around four minutes. Mr. O'Kane. Uh, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. And can I begin by thanking Jeremy Balfour for securing this evening's debate on the Down Syndrome Bill, which has passed its stages in the House of Commons and the House of Lords. Uh, and as the motion states, um, Dr Fox's bill received cross-party support across the House and has moved through stages, allowing, I think, for important debate and discussion about the human rights of people who have Down syndrome and, indeed, their family and carers. And I think that is what is important tonight. I do not want to get bogged down in a constitutional debate. I want to talk about the important lived experience of, of these people we are talking about. Indeed, my Welsh Labour colleague in the House of Commons, Ruth Jones, spoke very powerfully at stage two of her experiences as a paediatric uh, physiotherapist and the work she did, particularly in supporting children and young people. And I believe that many of the issues experienced by those people and their families were heard perhaps for the first time uh, in the United Kingdom Parliament. And I think that was uh, crucially important. And although the provisions of this bill relate to England, it has been welcomed by charities here in Scotland. Um, Eddie McConnell, um, who we heard uh, in the previous uh, speaker's contribution of Down Syndrome Scotland, said that the Down Syndrome Bill has the potential to be a landmark moment in advancing the rights of people with Down Syndrome. And he went on to point about the important collaborative work already being done here in Scotland to move forward the rights of people who have Down syndrome and people who have other learning disabilities as well. And I am proud to have already played a small part in that journey in my working life prior to becoming an MSP, and I hope to continue that work in this place. The Down syndrome bill seeks to remind public bodies of their duties uh, and gives legal weight to the rights of people and families who are fighting to get the support they need. And that is so important for so many people who describe trying to access the right support and services as a daily battle. Um, and although they've already said the bill has been broadly welcomed in England and indeed by organisations here in Scotland, Deputy Presiding Officer, I think it is fair to say that there have been some divergent views around um, how far the bill has gone and the fact that the bill could go further. Indeed, MenCap, for example, have said that they would have done things a bit differently. Uh, they would have had they been more involved at an earlier stage in the development of the bill. For example, uh, they would have made the bill applicable to everyone who has a learning disability and framed it in the language of a social rather than a medical model, uh, going to greater lengths indeed to engage more people with a lived experience. And MENCAP have of course acknowledged that rather than oppose this progress, they have looked optimistically at what it could lead to in the future in England. And, and to be honest, uh, Deputy Presiding Officer, I think that is where we find ourselves in Scotland. I think we have uh, a very clear opportunity. Uh, and I have already alluded to my previous work. I had the great honour at Enable Scotland of working with people who have a learning disability, their family carers and other organisations such as Scottish Autism and the National Autistic Society, to secure a cross-party commitment to a learning disability, autism and neurodiversity bill with the introduction of a commissioner to advocate, support and protect the rights of people across Scotland. And I know that the current minister, I know that Jeremy Balfour, I know that colleagues across the chamber um, share the passion and concern we have to get that right and to work with people across the country to listen to what they need uh, and to uh, deliver that bill here in Scotland and to deliver that commissioner with a robust set of powers to make a real difference. Uh, and now in this parliament, as convener of the cross-party group on learning disability, I will seek to act as a bridge between the many people who have a learning disability and this parliament uh, as we work to deliver a bill that will deliver for them. Of course, the work of Dr Liam Fox and the Down syndrome bill is an important start, uh, and we can draw inspiration from it. But I believe we can and must do more for people who have Down syndrome and people who have other learning disabilities and autism across Scotland. And I really do look forward to that work. Of course, it must be done at pace because we don't want to be left behind here in Scotland and we don't want to leave behind uh, those people who really need this uh, bill. 
Um, but I am looking forward, indeed, to the work, the discussion, the debates that we will have across this Parliament and across our country. I am sure that we will all want to undertake to ensure that the voices of those all too often not heard in this place are indeed heard. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. Thank you very much indeed, Mr O'Kane. I now call on Stephen Kerr for around four minutes, Mr Kerr. Uh, Deputy Presiding Officer, first of all, I would like to thank uh, Jeremy Balfour, my good friend, for bringing forward this important debate today. And I would also like to start off by paying tribute to Dr William Fox, our Conservative colleague in Scotland's other parliament, for the excellent work that he and colleagues across all parties in the House of Commons have done in bringing this bill through all of its various stages to legislation. And when I think about this issue that we're debating today, uppermost in my mind is a firm friend of our family, a young lady, not so young now, actually, when I think about it, but by the name of Joy. Um, she's not that much younger than I am, truthfully, but we've watched her through all the decades, how her mother has devotedly looked after her, met her needs, and frankly, the whole of both her mother and her life is an inspiration to my family. Um, I don't think anyone could be more appropriately named than this lady, Joy, because that's exactly what she exudes, and love, a kind of a pure love that is very rare. I can say in all honesty that her life has touched and is touching ours for good. One of the great strengths of the devolution settlement is that parliaments around the United Kingdom can learn from each other and, and indeed push each other on. And I remember well when the smoking ban was first introduced, this parliament took a lead on that issue and very quickly the rest of the United Kingdom followed. And now the UK parliament has taken the lead in championing and enhancing the rights of people with Down syndrome. We in this chamber and those in chambers in Cardiff and Belfast should be passing identical legislation to ensure that everyone with Down syndrome, regardless of where they live in the United Kingdom, have access to equal rights. I honestly am saddened that the Scottish Government have taken the approach they have to Dr Fox's bill in the new law. Families that have a child with Down syndrome find themselves fighting on several fronts to get the quality of care and support that they already should have the right to. Within the NHS, parents are fighting ever-increasing waiting lists and fighting to be regarded as sufficiently urgent. And within the school system, parents are constantly seeking additional support for learning disability. Within our care system, parents are looking for the at the increasing pressure and are worrying about how their child will cope in the system when they are no longer there to provide support. This law, Dr Fox's bill, makes it a priority for the UK Government to address these issues directly, and we should be making it law in Scotland to make it a priority for the Scottish Government and all levels of government in Scotland. This law also enhances parliamentary accountability. Rather than simply granting the Minister power to issue guidance to local authorities, this bill ensures that guidance would be laid before Parliament. And this allows Parliament to look at guidance in real time, allowing parliamentary scrutiny to determine how the guidance is working and if it can be improved. And the law also requires a named individual within a health board to be responsible for the application of this legislation, resulting in parents and families knowing who is directly responsible. This is another positive step in improving transparency and accountability within our health service. I say again, I'm sad when I talk to Jeremy Balfour and hear of the response that he's received from the government to his advances that this legislation should be introduced as it stands through this parliament. I'm afraid sometimes one is left with the conclusion that the government simply looks at everything, even the championing of disability rights, through the prism of the constitutional debate. Even in a bill that enhances the rights of those with Down syndrome, the SNP are refusing to budge from their set and repetitive narrative of, S of Westminster bad. These constitutional games by the SNP and Greens will see Scotland being left behind the rest of the United Kingdom in the protection and enhancement of the rights of people with Down syndrome. So, in conclusion, I urge the Scottish Government to grow up, follow the example set by the UK Parliament, and implement identical legislation to empower the lives of those with Down syndrome in Scotland, recognising their right to respect, independence and dignity. Thank you, Mr Kerr. I now call on the Minister to respond to the debate for around seven minutes, Mr Stewart. Uh, thank you, President Officer, and I thank all colleagues who have uh, contributed to today's debate. 
uh, and I'm very pleased that we are going to uh, be able this afternoon uh, to discuss um, folks with Down syndrome and uh, uh, move that even further forward to discuss learning disability, autism uh, and neurodiversity. Um, let me just start off by saying that in all of this, I certainly won't be playing any constitutional games uh, when it comes to bettering the life of folk uh, with learning disabilities, autism or neurodiversity. That is not uh, what I am about. Um, and I am a bit sad um, that there have been accusations today around about uh, the Constitution. And I would also say um, you know, that it has been mentioned by Mr Kerr, why do not we have identical legislation? Uh, quite simply, uh, because we want better legislation. Uh, and as Mr O'Kane pointed out in his speech, there has been criticism of Liam Fox's bill because it has not been as inclusive as it should be and it has not listened to the voices of lived experience uh, as much as it maybe should have. Um, and I agree completely um, uh, with Mr Cain that we should be looking at all of this uh, in terms of a social rather than a medical model. And what I will commit to do, uh, President Officer, uh, is to continue uh, to listen to the voices of lived experience as we move forward in all of this. Uh, and I give a commitment um, uh, here and now uh, to work in tandem uh, with the cross-party uh, group on learning disability, uh, because those voices of lived experience are heard there, um, uh, as well as in other places. Uh, and I hope that we can work across this parliament uh, to get this absolutely right. And I'll take Mr Balfour. Jeremy Balfour. Uh, can I thank the Minister for taking my intervention? Uh, the Minister will know that I'm introducing a consultation for a disability commissioner for all disabilities um, in the next couple of weeks. In principle, is the government supportive not only one for a certain area, but to cover all disabilities? And will the government support uh, my consultation document? Minister. Uh, first of all, I haven't seen um, Mr Balfour's consultation document. Uh, and we will look at uh, what responses uh, come back. But again, as Mr O'Kane pointed out, um, there was cross-party agreement, I think, in all of the manifestos that a learning disability, autism and neurodiversity bill should be introduced to this parliament. This government will keep to that commitment. Um, I, I, if I can make some progress, and I'll take you in again, Mr Balfour. Um, the Scottish Government is pleased to um, see the commitment from the UK Government to the Down Syndrome Bill. Uh, we recognise that people with Down Syndrome face a range of challenges um, at all life stages. Uh, and it's encouraging to see that the UK Government um, is exploring how best to meet the needs of individuals. Um, the Government here um, shares the ambition to improve opportunities, outcomes and support for people with Down Syndrome. Uh, and we will continue to do that. Uh, and we are aware uh, of the calls to extend the application of the bill to Scotland. However, our position is that we take a wider view of Down syndrome within the rights of people with all learning disabilities. Um, the value of this approach was highlighted by Baroness Sal Brinton uh, during the bill's third reading in the House of Lords on the 1st of April. Uh, and she stated, if the bill had the powers which its promoter suggests, there risks being a hierarchy of learning disability. This has already caused a split between families with, le with learning disabilities, all of whom still need to fight for the limited resources to which the law says they are entitled. Uh, and we have always taken a wider view uh, here in Scotland, um, where people with Down syndrome are included within current policy work on learning disabilities uh, in a second through the keys to life and the Towards tra uh, Transformation Plan and our work on the Learning Disabilities, Autism and Neurodiversity Bill. Uh, and I will return to some of these points later. And I will take um, uh, Mr Jackson Carlos. Carlos sorry. <laughs> Two weeks off. Jackson Carlos. I knew I was gone, Deputy Presiding Officer. I didn't know I was forgotten. But uh, um, I've known Liam Fox for over 40 years, and I'm quite sure that everything he has done in relation to this bill has been completely sincere. 
Uh, but I also think the Minister is a man of his word, and I've listened with care to the argument he's undertaken uh, to put to the Chamber this afternoon. Can he give, because I, my concern is with those constituents and those people I know who have Down syndrome and have carried with this across their lives. In what he is saying, can he give an assurance um, that the protections he expects will emerge out of this for those with Down syndrome, which he has aligned with other conditions too, will be no less robust, indeed will be more robust, and that he can anticipate and expect this bill to be forthcoming and to deliver uh, timorously for those people with this condition. That assurance, I think, would be very welcome. Minister, and I can give you the time back for Th both interventions. Thank you very much, President Officer. Um, I haven't been critical of Dr Fox's bill, um, but I think that we can go much further and we can do better by listening to the voices of lived experience. Um, and we are delighted that Down Syndrome Scotland has been very supportive of our work, uh, led by Eddie McConnell, as we mentioned earlier, um, who has done a huge amount uh, for people with Down Syndrome in Scotland. Um, I'll give you the assurance here and now, uh, Mr Carlo, um, that we will do our level best. Um, and it will not just be this uh, chamber that I, I will be held accountable uh, by, it will be the likes of Eddie McConnell and Down Syndrome Scotland. We intend to get this right for people uh, as we move forward. Um, ve will I get the time back? I've you will, Minister, walk. yes. Okay, I'll say it Jeremy Balfour. Uh, I, I, I'm grateful for Minister. Um, I appreciate he's not seen my consultation for a disability commissioner, but he will recognise that the disability community across, whether it's physical, mental, or other conditions have been deeply affected due to COVID. In principle, without committing to every detail, but in principle, is the Scottish Government in favour of not just the Commissioner for Neurodiversity and Down Syndrome, but for all disabilities, whatever they are? Minister. I, I will have a look at um, Mr Balfour's consultation and the responses to it. But what I am speaking about here today and what we are discussing here today um, is uh, Down syndrome. And what I do give a commitment to here and now, as was in our manifesto um, and was in the manifestos of many others, that there will be a learning disability, autism and neurodiversity bill during the course of this parliament. And that will ensure the rights of people with Down syndrome, amongst others, um, are respected and protected in law. And to help make sure that this new legislation is championed when it is implemented, we plan to create a learning disabilities, autism and neurodiversity commissioner through that new law. Uh, the Government committed to this bill when the First Minister announced it in the Scottish Pro Government's programme for Government on 7th of September. Um, and we are currently pursuing to provide and improve support for people with Down syndrome and other learning disabilities. The Government has set out its commitments to people with a learning disability, including those with Down syndrome and their families, through the 2013 Keys to Life Learning Disability Strategy and the implementation framework, which was refreshed in 2019. I, I, no, no, no I, I need to make progress. Do I get the time back, President Officer? Yes, but briefly, Mr Balfour. Uh, this will be brief, I promise, and this will be my final one, I promise, Mr Officer. Can I seek clarification? Does the Minister expect the bill that he's talking about to be presented in September of this year, or will it be uh, beyond that? What dates are we looking at? Minister. Uh, I'm not going to give a timeline for this bill, because uh, we have to listen to the voices of lived experience in all of this in order to get it right. It is not me that will set a timeline for this bill. It will be those voices of lived experience. Uh, we know that there are some polarised views uh, around about some issues. Uh, we have to iron all of that out and get this right for folk right across Scotland. So I'm not going to be pushed in the timeline because we need to continue to have conversations. Um, I talked about Keys to Life and the implementation framework. And additionally, uh, we have published our Learning and Intellectual Disabilities and Autism Towards Transformation Plan in March 2021. The plan looks at the actions needed to shape, support, services and attitudes to ensure that the human rights of autistic people uh, and people with learning uh, disabilities, including those with Down syndrome, are respected and protected. Uh, they must be empowered to live their lives the same as everyone else. And the actions within this plan cover all aspects of life. To address health inequalities, the Government has commissioned 
uh, the Scottish Learning Disability Observatory to undertake research on health out outcomes uh, for people with learning disabilities, including people with Down syndrome. And additionally, uh, we are exploring a national rollout of annual health checks for people with learning di disabilities. We are currently finalising the review of supported employment and implementing the action plan on the recommendations of the additional support for learning review. Finally, uh, the Scottish Government provides funding to Down Syndrome Scotland to support people with Down Syndrome and their families. And this includes family support, speech and language support for children and peer support for adults. In summary, the Government welcomes the UK Government's support for the uh, Down Syndrome Bill. Uh, and we will st strive to support the needs of people with D Down syndrome, their families and people with learning disabilities more broadly, uh, including via the Learning Disability, Autism and Neurodiversity Bill. Uh, we want the rights of people uh, with Down syndrome and all people with learning disabilities to be respected and protected. That is what I will strive to do. Hopefully we can do that with cross-party support. I hope that is the case as we move forward. But I'm sure uh, that we all share the view uh, that we need to do our best for people uh, with learning disabilities, uh, with autism and with neurodiversity here in our country. Uh, that will take a fair amount of work as we move forward. But I am absolutely adamant that we get this bill right. Thank you, President Officer. Thank you very much, Minister. That concludes the debate, and I close this meeting of Parliament.